Hey class, this is the section four videos and we're gonna talk about finding trig values of angles in any quadrant. And so the first thing we're gonna look at is this nice diagram. Um, it's kind of an acronym we use for helping to remember which trig functions are positive in which quadrants. So remember we count our quadrants counterclockwise, quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. And then the saying, all students take calculus, helps us remember that in quadrant one, all the trig functions are positive. And so this is gonna help us remember which ones are positive and which quadrant. And then for students, we're looking at the S, helps us remember that sine, and then it's reciprocal function cosecant are going to be positive in the second quadrant. Take the T helps us remember that tangent and cotangent are positive in quadrant three. And then calculus, it's the C for cosine and secant are positive in quadrant four. So all students take calculus. You'll see how that comes into play later. We will need to be familiar with our special triangle ratio, so we do need to know these. For the 30, 60, 90, remember the short side is one. The long side is square root of three times as big as that, so one square root of three. And the hypotenuse is double the short leg, so two. So one square root of three, two for that one. And then 45, 45, 90, the isosceles triangle, both legs are congruent and we let them be one one and then it's one square root of two times as big for the hypotenuse. So now we're going to find the six trig values for a few different angles. We're going to do that by sketching the angle, then we're going to find the reference angle, then we're going to use our special right triangle ratios to help us find the six trig values of that angle. So let's start by sketching our angle. So here's my x, y axis, and then 120 degrees is gonna be just about here, and counterclockwise. And then we're gonna find the reference angle. Remember the reference angle is an acute angle, so it's less than 90 degrees, and it's formed with the x axis and the terminal side of the angle. And so the terminal side is right here, and the x-axis that would make an acute angle is right here, so that's our reference angle. And so in the second quadrant, to find the reference angle, we take 180 minus our 120, and that would leave us with 60 degrees for our reference angle. And then we're going to use that to make a right triangle here. So we're gonna use the x-axis and our terminal side, and we're gonna make it into a right triangle. And then since we have a 60 degree reference angle, this right triangle is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we're gonna label it with our special triangle ratios. So the short side across from the 30 is gonna be one. 60 across from the 60 is gonna be square root of three. And the hypotenuse is gonna be two. And then we can use our reference angle, this angle right here, to find the tr six trig values of this angle, 120 degrees. They're gonna be equal. But because we're in the second quadrant and we're looking at this terminal side where the angle lies, we're picking like this, we're using this point to help us find the trig values of 120 degrees. To get that, to get to that point, we went over one and up three. Because we went to the left one, this one right here is actually negative. So negative one up square root of three, and then the hypotenuse is always positive. So now we're gonna use 60 degrees, which means that the square root of three is our opposite side, this is our adjacent side, and this is our hypotenuse. So then the sine of 120 degrees, we can find by using this reference angle here and it's opposite over hypotenuse. So it'll be square root of three over two. And then cosine of 120 degrees will be adjacent over hypotenuse, so negative one half. And then tangent of 120 degrees is going to be opposite over adjacent, so square root of three over negative one or negative square roots of three. So those are our first three. 
whoops. Now we're going to find the reciprocal functions. So remember the reciprocals um, flip the numerator and denominator of the original functions. The reciprocal of sine is cosecant. So cosecant of 120 degrees is going to be 2 over the square root of 3, which does need to then be rationalized. And then we'll get 2 square roots of 3 over 3. And then the reciprocal for cosine is secant of 120. And that's going to be 2 over negative 1 or negative 2. And then the reciprocal for tangent is cotangent of 120. Should be negative 1 over the square root of 3. So then we multiply both the top and bottom by the square root of 3 to rationalize that. So negative square root of 3 over 3. And so those are our answers. Okay, kind of going back to the idea. So those are our six answers for 120 degrees, and we use this triangle with our reference angle to help us find those. Now going back to that saying where we had all students take calculus going around the four quadrants, that is going to help us remember that in quadrant two, sine and cosecant should be the only two of the six that are positive. And you can see my answers, those are the only two that are positive and the rest are negative. And that worked out nicely because I remembered that this was a negative one here because it was left on the x-axis. So I added the negative before I started. If you forget to do that, you can use all students take calc and then go back and make this other six negative at the end. So that's another way to do that when you finished up. All right, let's try another one. So we got theta negative 45. So negative 45 is going to be in the fourth quadrant because a negative angle, we go clockwise. So that's going to be right here. And then we're going to use, uh, find the reference angle, which is the terminal side and the x-axis. And the reference angle is always positive. So it's going to be 45 degrees back to the x-axis there. And we're going to make that into a right triangle. And since it's a right triangle, 45, 45, 90, our sides are going to be 1, 1, and our hypotenuse across from the 90 degree angle is going to be 2. And then since we are in the fourth quadrant, we went positive 1, but then down. So this one is actually going to be negative, and then our hypotenuse is always positive because we find that by doing x squared plus y squared. So it's always positive. Um, then we can use this reference angle to help us find the trig, the six trig values of the negative 45 degrees. So sine of negative 45 degrees is going to be one. Oh, it's opposite. So this is my opposite side, and this is my adjacent side. This is my hypotenuse. So opposite is going to be negative one over the square root of two which then needs to be rationalized. So negative square roots of 2 over 2. And the cosecant of negative 45 will be the reciprocal of that, square root of 2 over negative 1, so negative square roots of 2. The cosine of negative 45 degrees is going to be adjacent over, or adjacent over hypotenuse. You know, I'm writing square root of 2 over here, but I forgot to put the square root of 2 on the hypotenuse. It's 1, 1 square root of 2. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which will rationalize to square root of 2 over 2 again. And then secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so square root of 2 over 1, so square root of 2. And then tangent is opposite over adjacent, so negative 1 over 1, so negative 1. And then the reciprocal of negative 1 is also negative 1 for cotangent. And then if we double check with all students take calculus, the C stands for cosine, and then its reciprocal should be positive, and the other four should be negative, which does work out because I added my negative value right here. If not, I could go back and make these four negative, and then these two are positive because it's in the cosine quadrant. All right, we're going to do that one more time. So we got 210 degrees. So 
So 210 degrees is going to be all the way into the third quadrant. About there. And then, you know, it might be a little bit less than that, but... And then in the third quadrant, we find the reference angle by taking 210 minus 180, which would leave us with 30 degrees. So our reference angle here is 30 degrees, and that would be right here. It's the x-axis and that terminal side. So we're going to make that, this into a right triangle. With the always use the x-axis to make our right triangle because that's where our reference angle is which means this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And across from the 30 will be my short side. With At one, across from 60 is gonna be square root of three, and the hypotenuse is two. And then because I am in the third quadrant from the origin, I go left and down, which means that both of these values are negative. When you were to plot this point here, it'd be negative and negative to get there. So we can apply those negatives, and then we'll find our trig functions. So if we do sine of 210, we can find that by using that 30 degree reference angle, which means that this would be your opposite side, this is your adjacent side, and this is your hypotenuse. So sine would be negative one over two, so negative one half, which means it's reciprocal of 210 would be negative two cosine of 210 would be adjacent over hypotenuse, so negative square roots of 3 over 2, and the reciprocal would be secant of 210 degrees, which is going to be 2 over negative square roots of 3, and that'll have to be rationalized and we're gonna multiply by the square root of three. So two square roots of three over three, and it was negative. And then finally, tangent of 210 degrees, the opposite over adjacent, then rationalize that. Two negatives is gonna make this positive. It's gonna be square root of three over three. And then cotangent finally, is going to be negative square roots of three over negative one, which is positive square roots of three. So double checking with our all students take calculus, and we are in the tangent quadrant this time. And so tangent are the two that are positive and the other four are negative. And so if we didn't apply the negatives before we started, we could go back and add those then. All right, I'm gonna do one more example for this video. And that's one like this, where you have the point negative five, negative 12 is on the terminal side. And so that's like having this point right here. And so we're gonna go ahead and graph or sketch where negative five, negative 12, I'm gonna approximate it to be right about here. So it's similar to the last one, but in the last one, I knew the angle. In this one, I know the point. And so I'm gonna make the right triangle using the x-axis again. And so I'm gonna draw the triangle down to the x-axis, and then I'm gonna use the reference angle, which is the terminal side to the x-axis. The difference is, is that I don't know what that angle is, but I do know that I went negative five and negative 12 to get there. In which case, I know the side lengths. Now I can solve for the hypotenuse by taking negative 5 squared plus negative 12 squared. And that will give me my hypotenuse squared. So 25 and 144 is 169. And the square root of 169 is 13. So that's 5, 12, 13. And then... We're gonna find, so it's asking for all six. I think I'm just gonna do three and then maybe do this one down here too. So sine of that angle, we don't know what that angle is, but sine would be opposite hypotenuse. So negative 12 over 13. Cosine of that angle would be adjacent over hypotenuse, negative five over 13. And then tangent would be 
negative 12 over 5 or negative 12 over negative 5, so positive 12 fifths. And then we could take the reciprocal of all of these, and you would see that because you're in all students take calculus, the third quadrant again, the tangent one is going to be positive. You could go back and find the other three. Because it's getting kind of long, I'm going to skip those for now and do one more example like this. So we know our terminal side lies on the point 6, so to the right 6, and then down 2. So right 6, down 2. It's going to be right about here. That's our terminal side of our angle. So our angle actually goes all the way around. So then we find our reference angle, which is right here with the x-axis, and we're going to make a right triangle. And then we know that our make this just a little bit bigger here. So 6, negative 2, it doesn't have to be perfect. But, so our reference angle is right here, and then I know I went positive 6, and then down negative 2 to make that right triangle. And so 6 squared plus negative 2 squared is going to give you your hypotenuse value. So that's going to be 36 plus 4, which is 40. And then if we take the square root of 40, we know I have a perfect square in there. The square root of 4 is 2. 10 is 2 and 5, so that's going to stay. So we're going to have C equal to 2 square roots of 10, or your hypotenuse, 2 square roots of 10. And then we're using our reference angle, so the negative 2 is our opposite side, 6 is our adjacent side, and 10 is our hypotenuse. So then we have uh, our th 6 answers, and I might just do the first 3 still, just for time. The sine of that angle, which we don't know, is going to be opposite over hypotenuse 2 square roots of 10. We can reduce that to negative 1 over the square root of 10, and then rationalize. And we would get negative square roots of 10 over 10. And then cosine of that angle would be adjacent over hypotenuse. Reduce that, and then rationalize. So 6 divided by 2 is 3, then multiply by the square root of 10. Gives us 3 square roots of 10 over 10. And then tangent would be opposite over adjacent, which reduces to negative one-third. And then you would be able to find the other three by taking the reciprocals. And then if you double check with all students take calculus, it should match that cosine is the positive one and the other two are negative. And then if you wanted to find the angle, you could use inverse um, inverse trig so remember the inverse so if you did inverse tangent which i have to hold it down of negative one third you would get negative 18 degrees so that would be this angle right here so 360 um plus the, like minus negative 18 the angle itself is 341.56 so if you're curious on how to find that angle, thanks for watching.